Hello. Uh, hello. Thank you, John. How are you, Alderman Budmans? I'm okay. How are you doing? Doing all right. Doing all right. I'm a little bit sore from from shoveling, but testing. You and me both. <laughs> hey, John. We can hear you. Yeah, I'm a little bit sore from putting together a new snowblower in my family room here. <laughs> <laughs> in the family room. Nice. Well, it was a little cold outside. <laughs> By the way, my son will snow blow people's uh, driveways. <laughs> Luckily, this snow wasn't too heavy. At least when I was shoveling, it wasn't too heavy. Yeah, I told him I'd get him a new shovel, but we wound up with a snowblower. Yeah, we just used the snowblower at the bottom where there was a lot of the, the heavy stuff from the plows. Yeah. I'm happy to say they have their timing down perfect again, where driveways are fully completed and then they come flying through. <laughs> That's always good. It's a, it's a tradition. But the streets were great this again. We're going to go ahead and give it, it's obviously a minute before 730, but uh, I always give it about another minute or so after because it always, well, it never fails. As soon as I start the meeting, uh, have to let in a couple more folks, so I might as well just wait a minute or two. Letting in the last two folks in the waiting room, and then I'll go ahead and get started. Okay. Well, I have 7.31 on my clock, and so I might as well say good evening and welcome to this uh, snowy Tuesday, January 26th meeting uh, of the City Council. I'm gonna go ahead and call this meeting to order. And in order to do that, I'd like everybody to remain muted, but still at this time, join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. With the pledge completed, I'd like to have all the members of the council go ahead and unmute yourselves in preparation for the clerk to call roll. And with that, would the clerk please call roll? Mikhail. Here. Bud Mats. Present. O'Brien. Here. Veneziano. You're meeting at dawn though? Mine's starting too then. 7.30? Is she not here? Is anybody here? Um, I'll look in the list. I don't know that I see her. Looks like Lori Cizak is joining now. Uh, why don't you circle back to her and see okay. if she's just joining late? Okay, Basasi. Here. Yastis. Present. Sonoika. Here. And Veneziano. Yeah, so it looks okay. like at this time we have six present and one absent. There's still a quorum this evening. And with that, members of the audience are reminded that these proceedings are being recorded for current and future broadcasts over the city's cable television channel, as well as other media outlets. 
Public comment, of course, will be afforded to the public who are joining us on this conference line, as long as you provided your contact credentials and the subject matter for which you'd like to speak about before the deadline, which is also noted on this evening's agenda packet. Members of the public who might be present at city council chambers listening to this meeting are also afforded the opportunity to provide public comment in accordance with the procedures uh, a public comment at an in-person meeting of the city council, which is primarily those members of the public must have signed in on the public comment sheet before the start of the meeting. And as always, any written comments that were submitted prior to the meeting will be read as well. With that, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into the agenda. And it looks like the first order of business here is to approve minutes from a previous meeting. And that meeting is the January 12th, 2021 City Council meeting. Is there a motion by show of hand to approve the minutes? Thank you, Alderman Sonoika and Alderman O'Brien for the second on that. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions to these minutes? Alderman O'Brien, I see your hand up. Just want to see if it's for changes or legacy. Legacy. Got it. Thank you. Um, seeing no, no comments, questions, corrections, additions, or deletions to this, then uh, the question is, shall these minutes be approved? With that, will the clerk call the roll? Sassy. Yes. Fiestas. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Bud Matt. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, those minutes are approved. Now, let me get the monitor here on the public side to catch up with the private side. Uh, we will not be deviating at this point in tonight's meeting. Uh, for the mayor's report, um, just two quick items to mention, which everybody should hopefully be aware of. Uh, toward the end of last week and the beginning of this week, we saw a couple of significant updates. For one, the vaccination schedule has transitioned to 1B, which is opening up vaccine opportunities for a larger swath of the population. Um, so that's very uh, hopeful. Uh, we also learned through the governor's office that they've loosened restrictions on businesses to welcome patrons back in. Now, obviously, these are small incremental uh, steps toward progress, and we still have quite a ways to go. But those two things help me feel hopeful, and I hope it does the same for you as well. Um, with that, are there any ward reports this evening? Alderman McHale. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to take a second um, to Thank Mr. Cannon for uh, his service representing Ward 1 as Alderman for the past nine years. And I also wanted to thank you, Mayor Gallo, for allowing me the opportunity to serve the residents of Ward 1. I look forward to collaborating with my fellow council members and moving the city of Rolling Meadows into the future. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Alderman McHale. We look forward to working and collaborating with you as well. Thank you for the nice comments and notes. Um, any other ward reports this evening? Alderman McHale, I'm just gonna lower you. It's done, good. Okay, well, if there aren't any other, Alderman Budmatz? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, um, I took the liberty of texting Jennifer to find out if she was gonna make an meeting and she tell me she's having Wi-Fi problems, so. She is trying to make it in, so just letting you know. Thanks, thank you for the update. Appreciate that. You know what I really don't like? I don't like how they changed the, the raise hand feature. Uh, historically, it was blue, and now it's like an orangey or yellow color, and I cannot see it for some reason. I just can't see it. So I'm gonna have to be a little bit more vigilant with those hands coming up. Um, but anyway, thank you for that update. Now, if there aren't any other award reports, this would be the time that we open the floor up to the public for 20 minutes. And there is a signature on the sign-in sheet. So before I call out to that individual, I just wanna lay out a couple ground rules as we do when there are members of the public speaking with the council. Um, the first being that per the rules of procedure, the public is to address the city council 
And the fact that no member of the city council responds does not mean that the city council or any member thereof agrees or disagrees with that public comment. And second, in order to attain this objective, the following rules of conduct are hereby established and we hope that everybody abides by them. Any person who seeks to address the city council at this time for public comments shall be permitted to speak only upon the recognition of the presiding officer. I think we have Alderman Veneziano entering as well. Um, and such person shall adhere to the following provisions. Each person addressing the city council shall state their name for the record, and each person shall be granted five minutes of the allotted 20 minutes in order to address the city council. And finally, profanity shall not be used in any form or manner. With that being noted, the individual who signed in is John Quandris. John, if you're on the line, um, feel free to unmute now. If you called in, press star six to unmute. Hi, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, my name is John Quandris and my address is 2104 Coil Lane. I'm here regarding uh, item D where I'm seeking a variance uh, for my property. I'm available if anyone has any questions. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Quandris. That's good to know that you are available. So council, if this does come up with questions, comments, or concerns for the resident, he's here and we can make a motion to open the floor if necessary. Thank you for that. At this time, Mr. Quandris was the only name on the sheet. So that will bring us to items pending. The first one we have, the only one we have is line item A, ordinance number 21-02. It's to approve an ordinance confirming and extending the state of emergency within the city of Rolling Meadows due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, and thank you, Alderman Sonoika. Is there any discussion by show of hand? Seeing none, the question is, shall the ordinance be adopted? Will the clerk please call roll? Yes, this. Yes. Sunoika. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Bud Max. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Vesessi. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed. This ordinance is adopted. Uh, quick question, do we have to, to circle back and call attendance again or not now that Alderman Veneziano is here? Is there any reason for that? Mayor, you announced that Alderman Veneziano um, entered the meeting. So if the clerk could just, uh, would, and the clerk recognized it, so that's completely fine. Okay. And the, um, if Judy noted the time, um, she should just appropriately appropriately note the time that Alderman Veneziano entered the meeting, which I believe was 7.38. Yes, that's what I have. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Then we can continue on here with the next set of items, which is the consent ordinances in for first reading. This consists of four items, it's items B, Bravo through E, Echo, does any alderman wish to remove an item from the consent agenda for ordinances? Alderman O'Brien. Uh, I'd like to remove item C as in Charlie, Mr. Mayor, for hopefully a quick uh, discussion based on the committee of the whole meeting, please. Oh, alrighty, give me one moment to note it. Um, any other council member wish to remove an item? Okay. Well, since we're going to be pulling item C, the chair declares it in order for one motion to consider the three ordinances in one motion without debate. Is there such a motion? Thank you, Alderman Sonoika, and thank you for the second, Alderman O'Brien. We have I. Item B, ordinance number 21-00, it's to approve an ordinance confirming and extending the state of emergency within the city of Rolling Meadows due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have then line item D, ordinance number 21-00 at this time to a grant approval of a variation from section V-2C of the city code chapter 122 city of rolling meadows zoning ordinance to reduce the east side yard setback from 10 feet 
to 2.6 feet to allow a second story addition on top of, it, of an existing foundation in an R3 zoning district at 2104 Quail Lane. In line item E, ordinance number 21-00 at this time is authorize a text amendment to update section II5C8B7 of the city code chapter 122, city of Rolling Meadows zoning ordinance regarding outdoor seating regulations. The question is, shall the three ordinances be moved forward for second reading? Will the clerk please call the roll? Nika. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Bud Max. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Diastas. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, the ordinances will be moved forward for second reading. This now brings us back to line item C, ordinance number 21-00 at this time, amend the city code regarding the organization and operation of committees and commissions of the city of Rolling Meadows. Is there a motion to approve this ordinance? Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Alderman Sonoika. Alderman O'Brien, you did have the first uh, pull on this, so continue with your questions, comments, or concerns. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, just hopefully this is real brief based on the community of the whole, and I had a couple of the residents reach out to me since then. From a consistency perspective, there was two items um, I was looking to possibly add in um, and to make sure this can pass at second reading. Hopefully this allows ample time for any additional research that might need to be done on staff or attorney Wolf's perspective. So I'm proposing potentially just two, maybe a, a motion on one and then a motion on the other. We can keep them separate in case one moves forward and the other one doesn't. Um, the first one I'd like to propose to the group is as noted during the committee, the whole meeting, the couple of residents that had reached out from a consistency perspective, because um, that's the way that I was reading these is that we can make everything as consistent as we can since we were opening up and looking at all committees and commissions. Could we add, because um, it's currently noted in the ethics committee as well as the police and fire um, commission is, I don't think we have, to, I'm not proposing any language change or anything like that, but there is this statement that I think it's good for us too as council members, so then there's not even any potential question or concern there, is can we include in each of the commissions um, as previously drafted for approval is the statement where no uh, member of the committee or council could be related to any elected official of the city by blood or marriage to the extent of first cousin, I think is the wording. Just from a consistency perspective, because it's in a couple of them, but it's not in all. Um, I was reading it from the consistency perspective as well as the residents reaching out. So that's one recommendation or motion I'd like to pass forward. Okay, so we'll start with that one. Is there, uh, uh, first let's let's stop there and just, I see Storino, Dirk and Romello hand raised. Let's hear from our uh, attorney on this. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for the proposed amendment. I just want to, to give the council some feedback regarding the statutory requirements um, with respect to those particular commissions and the provisions with respect to those that, that were particularly mentioned, being the Ethics Commission and the Board of Police and Fire Commissions, those are designated by statute. Right. So the language that you have there is mimicking the state statute. And I... I, I would not recommend changing it uh, just for mere consistency because that would be going against the statutory requirements. Right, Mr. Mayor, can I, can I respond to that? I, I'm not looking to change anything. I'm looking to use that leverage just in the rest of our commissions and committees. That's okay. all I'm looking to do for consistency. I don't want to change the verbiage, change anything with the ethics okay. or police and fire, is just leverage that approved verbiage from the statute to the other ones. Is that not allowed, Attorney Wolf? That is that is fine then, and I will be able to evaluate in the meantime um, if those other commissions or commissions have any statutory restrictions on that. But as long as you're not changing the board of fire and police right. commission, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I thought we could leverage that from an ease perspective and not touch those. Just use that approved verbiage if if there was consensus at the council. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. So now I'm looking for a second 
and I see Alderman Budmatz, your hand is up, I'm assuming, in second of that motion. Um, actually, no, I had a question, I, so I'll, I'll well, wait until the second. All right, yeah, so if you give us a second here, then I can at least bring it up for discussion, so you can have the floor for discussion. Alderman Budmatz. Do you need a second first as a question? Oh yeah, if you're not gonna give the second, that's fine. That's fine. Um, then we'll look at Alderman Diastas. Do you Are you seconding or do you have discussion? Alderman Diastas. I'll second the motion so we can have discussion. Okay. All right, thank you for the second. Uh, is there any discussion? Alderman Budmatz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, I, I guess I understand the tenor of um, Alderman O'Brien's comment and, and motion. I'm curious as to um, as to the effect, um, are there people who presently serve on committees or commissions who are related by blood or by marriage and, and are we going to be um, closing them out of the process? And so um, I, I think where the state statute makes that relevant, that it should not occur is, is good that we would follow the state statute, but also the, uh, the, the thought comes to my mind that uh, I would much rather that we disclose that openly um, um, when when we're seeing that these positions are voted by the council and the, and the um, recommendations are either voted upon yes or no. So I would I would more like to see that uh, we don't dis, we don't discriminate against somebody um, being on a committee or a commission, but that we could instead of instead of um, not allowing them, we would require somebody who, who, um, who does fit into those categories, um, in and in a in a committee that's not required by a state statute to have that, to um, have them disclose that at the time that they're being appointed, and then it's up to the it's up to the council or the 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 body as a whole because I think they may to say yes or no and and to move past that. I, I yield. Uh, thank you, Alderman Budmetz. I see Attorney Wolf's hand up, and then I'm going to ask for other comments. And if there aren't any, I have some comments I'd like to share. Uh, Attorney Wolf. Sorry, Mayor. I, I forgot to lower my hand. Oh. <laughs> From before. Thank you. No worries. Uh, any other comments for discussion on this? Alderman Sunoika. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a question for Alderman O'Brien because he stated that. Uh, he wants all of the committees and commissions to be consistent. And um, I guess, is there any other motivation behind consistency for, for this uh, proposed amendment to the ordinance at hand? Um, it, it was this a, a problem at, in another municipality where, um, you know, I'm looking at something like the Capital Improvements Committee or planning and zoning perhaps or something like that, uh, but planning and zoning isn't on here, or I'm sorry, planning and zoning is on here. Um, were, was there some sort of conflict that arose because of this relationship? No, and, uh, there's not elements in like it. It was just from reading through that. That's the second part I have on here, which I know we'll treat differently is just residency. That's another consistency perspective. So, and also to Alderman Budmat's point, I'm not aware of anything. And I think it should be, if anything in the past, it should be going forward, not to change the makeup of the current commissions. That's that's all that it was. A couple of residents had reached out to me as I know during the committee of the whole, a couple more had done it after they listened to the committee of the whole. So that's that's the only impetus of this is that some had it, which we know is by state law. Um, some residents just said, could it carry through? So. But that's the only reason I'm doing it. But I think Alderman Budmat has a very fair point. If there's not agreement with council for prohibiting it, is that at least maybe we document and that's the compromise for addressing it and just say or um, saying that they are related. That would work as well. Um, then I would state that until I don't see any reason to for this for us to be proactive in, in this stance, just because I know that 
based off of our committee of the whole discussion, we have vacancies to fill. And um, I, I would want our, our um, requirements to be the ne necessary requirements. And if as long as we have disclosure and we're aware of that and someone comes forth before the council and we make the decision at that point, I, I think that that might make more sense. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Alderman Sonoika. Alderman Veneziano. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I apologize for my tardiness. Wi-Fi is not uh, cooperating today. Um, so I, I'm going to kind of reiterate um, what Alderman Sonoika had said, that I appreciate the idea of having consistency, um, but one of my reservations would be that if we do have a council member and then a family member that maybe can fill a role um, because they're a business owner or maybe they can um, serve on you know, the, you know, maybe they're an electrical engineer that can serve our community on one of our committees, that would be a benefit. Um, and, you know, all of the appointments have to come to council for, you know, approval, you know, and that would be disclosed. Um, so I think to have, you know, a response to residents to state that, you know, if there is a conflict, um, it's going to be addressed um, in front of council, you know, to approve or, or, um, or not. So um, I appreciate the idea of having consistency, um, but I would hate to turn away volunteers in a small community like ours that could potentially fill vacancies on committees that we'd need to fulfill. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alderman Veneziano. Alderman Diaz. Thank you. Um, I see both, both sides of this uh, question. And uh, I'd like to know, uh, is there, uh, I guess the ad address this to the attorney, is there a mechanism that can be placed into each uh, committee or commission uh, whereby the individual has to make that disclaimer and that has to be brought up to the council before a vote is taken? Uh, yes, I, I believe the, the amendment that we're talking about here would um, require uh, either, if it doesn't prohibit the relationship, it, it looks like the next question would be whether it would require the disclosure of the relationship, and, and that would be a code amendment. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Alderman O'Brien, with all this conversation, could you restate specifically exactly what you're what you're looking to have um, sure. carried out here absolutely my initial motion is that we leverage the current verbiage for police fire bolt commission and the ethics commission about no member of a committee or commission being related to any city official elected official based on blood or marriage to the extent of first cousin I do think I'd, I'd like to get a, a vote on that, but I am also available. I hadn't thought about the compromise of disclosing. I think that would be a fair opportunity too, as well. Mm -hmm. So then we can, we'll, we'll take a vote on this and it, depending on how that goes, you can raise another uh, request in motion. Um, for me, I just wanna say that I, the reason there is that statutory language for those committees and commissions is it's a way to safeguard from any nefarious behavior Obviously, those committees and commissions that have that statutory language are responsible for ensuring that if there is an investigation of some sort, that an individual on the council couldn't leverage uh, any sort of nepotism or family relation affiliation to, to sway an outcome in something. Uh, something is, I don't want to call it trivial because it's not trivial, it's an important committee, but the Economic Development Committee or the Environmental Committee, I really don't know how the gravity of that language um, would, would either help or hinder by not allowing uh, somebody of kin to participate in those bodies based on their chartered purpose. Um, so for me, I, I don't see the relevance in doing that other than for those committees and commissions that safeguard against potential nefarious behavior or bad actors. Um, so I, I wouldn't agree with that. But I see Alderman Veneziano, I see your hand is up. I'm not sure if it's up from Legacy or, thank you, it's gone now. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Sunoika? 
Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I just also wanted to close out by saying that the, this is a, a relatively small town where a lot of people know each other and have grown up together. And if we were to pursue a, dis a disclosure um, amendment, then I don't know if that would really achieve necessarily the purpose that that um, that the that the purpose of the amendment is is there to. Um, or for why it exists, which is what you had just explained, Mr. Mayor. So like I could have a friend that's not related to me by blood, but if I grew up with them here in Rolling Meadows and had that kind of loyalty or influence or connection and use it for nefarious purposes, that kind of amendment would not, would not prevent this from happening. Um, and so I don't know necessarily how effective it would be. That's all. Thank you, valid point. Any other comments or discussion on this? And if not, then we will have the clerk call the roll on Alderman O'Brien's motion. McHale. No. Bud Max. Mm -hmm. What was that? It was a no, I think. Oh, okay. O'Brien? Yes. Veneziano? No. Bissessi? Yes. Yes, this. Yes. Tonica. No. <clears throat> With three in favor and four opposed, that motion does not pass. Alderman O'Brien, you still have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. I would like to, to do another thing then with the, the, I think it was a fair idea for a potential compromise is bringing up that at least it's disclosed that some of the other aldermen brought up this evening. So if we could do uh, just a disclosure vote. Is there um, a second to Alderman O'Brien's motion to have a uh, disclosure? Alderman Diasis, I see the second there. Thank you. Is there any discussion on this item? Okay, seeing none, then the question is to add disclosure of a blood relative, including the language as stated by the statutory language for the other committees. Will the clerk please call the roll? Bud Max. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Diestis. Yes. Shanoika. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Wait, it's seven in favor and none opposed. And that motion carries. Alderman O'Brien, you have any more for us? <laughs> I've got one more, but hopefully, I thought that was gonna, that was gonna be a quick one. This one is, just hoping again for clarification or consistency, is several of the committees do note a residence requirement and I moot either way. Like Economic Development Committee, I agree outside people that are business owners here that don't necessarily live here, perfectly to be on the committee. But then you look at environmental and it says residence, or you look at, I think it's the, the capital improvement, it says three residents. So there's just a difference there. My question was, and this was no residents reach out to me on this. This was just my reading them is we have some that say it's required others that don't. So if the committees that are moot on it and don't make a reference, what's implied that they do have to be a resident. It's our discretion as the council that they be a resident. And maybe we don't need to go any further, but I just wasn't sure the interpretation of that since some say that's required, others say they don't. So the ones that are silent on it, is that left to council and mayor's decision on appointments, if they're a resident or not? And if that's the case, I'm fine with it. I just, that was my own question. I guess, can you point out the, uh, do you recall a specific one that doesn't make mention? I see attorney Wolf's hand is up, but um, if let you me can take dig back in your notes while yeah, she's the, speaking. The only three, yeah, go ahead, absolutely, attorney Wolf. Attorney yes, um, I believe that the Illinois Municipal Code dictates this issue with respect to um, just some of the general provisions with respect to officers of the municipality and uh, residency is a requirement to, to be an officer. So unless there's some provision in the code that says, like, for instance, the business uh, or the Economic Development Committee, you know, um, it, I believe that they have to be a business owner within the city, but not reside within the city of Rolling Meadows. 
So every other every other commission or uh, committee member would be required to be a member then as dictated by the municipal code. Great. Mr. Mayor, that takes care of my question then. It was just that it was called out, like in EDC, it was called out not having to be, which makes total sense. Environmental and the capital improvement said they needed to be. So just on the other ones that had no reference to it, like police and fire pension, and all the other ones didn't have a reference to it. It seemed that it was silent on it, but it sounds like if it's not noted, the assumption is by the statute is that they would be residents. So I think that's that's totally fine by me. I don't know that we need okay. to go any further. Yeah. Wonderful. So that answers your questions for that. And I do see there's a couple hands up. Uh, do you have more or can I call on the others? You can certainly call on the others. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, Attorney Wolf, I see your hand is up. Just curious if it's supposed to be or you do have more to say. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Budmatz. Um, I, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, I, I do think about the electric commission. I think one of the requirements is that it's like part of a regulating body like UL underwriters or CSA, which uh, not to be funny, but I highly doubt there's anybody who's a resident of Rolling Meadows who's also um, in a, in a regulatory um, capacity at UL. So in some of those situations, it would be impossible to meet the intent of the committee if, if we if we only went with residents. So um, there has to be a little bit of give and take if, if that's what we're trying to accomplish. So also for clarification, that is, that is a committee that I believe is dictated by statute. So there may be other committees or commissions that are specifically dictated by statute and identify uh, specific requirements um, for, uh, you know, member, the members. So unless otherwise dictated by the statute, I would say that the Illinois Municipal Code would control. Alderman Budmetz, anything Thank further? Clarification. Fun fact, we do have a resident in Rolling Meadows who, who does work for Underwriters Laboratory in that specific arena. He rides his bike from Meadows to work at UL. Um, so we do. But uh, anyway, Manager Crumstock. Thank you, Mayor and uh, City Council. I just want to reiterate one thing that um, Alderman Budmatz stated, almost the same thought, but we do have other professionals who are on boards and commissions, specifically when you look at the Board of Fire and Police, the pension boards, we do have people from banks, we do have people from outside agencies that are professionals, maybe they're actuarial or something like that in the past. So it's given us the flexibility to look for the most professional individuals to help out and staff and maintain some of that work that is in um, some of our committees and commissions. So I guess if you're asking staff wise, we like when they're silent. So it gives the flexibility as was mentioned by Alderman Budmatz, but also it allows for some of those outside agency professionals who are not residents to come in and sit on some of those committees and commissions. Uh, thank you, Manager Crumstock. Any further discussion on this item, this line item C? Manager Crumstock, I'm gonna go ahead and put your uh, hand down, I'm gonna lower the hand. And it doesn't look like we have any further comments or discussion on this item. So the question is, shall the ordinance be moved forward for second reading? Will the clerk please call the roll? O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Bassesi. Yes, as amended. Yes, this. Yes. Sonoita. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Bud Max. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, this ordinance will move forward for second reading. This now brings us to new business, which is a motion to approve payments of bills on warrant for January 26th, 2021. By show of hand, is there a motion to approve the warrant? Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. And thank you, Alderman McHale for the second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the question is, shall the warrant be approved? Will the clerk please call roll? Veneziano. Yes. 
Sessie. Yes. Fiestas. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Bud Max. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, the warrant is approved. So this uh, brings us to the next item on the agenda, the consent resolutions. This consists of five items, items G through K. Does any alderman wish to remove any item from the consent agenda for resolutions? Alderman Budmatz. Item I, please. Item I, make a note on that. Any others from any other alderman? Okay, seeing none, then the chair declares it in order for one motion to consider the four resolutions in a single motion without debate. Is there such a motion? Thank you, Alderman Sunoika. Thank you for the second, Alderman O'Brien. That'll begin us off here with the first one G, resolution number 21-R-03. It's to award a one-year extension contract <clears throat> for janitorial services for city facilities from February 1st, 2021 through January 31st of 2022. Then there's line item H, resolution number 21-R-04, except the International Union of Operating Engineers Local 150 Public Employees Division contract. Moving on to line item J, resolution number 21-R-06, approve Weber Drive Roadway Improvement Project, phase one engineering. And line item K, resolution number 21-R-07, award a professional design engineering services contract for the proposed community development block grant, the CDBG for Arbor Drive phase two resurfacing project. The question is, shall the four resolutions be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Sassy. Yes. Fiestas. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Bud Max. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, those resolutions are adopted. Now, this brings us back to resolution number 21-R-05. It's to approve an intergovernmental agreement with the Village of Arlington Heights for Weber Drive Phase 1 Roadway and Pedestrian Improvement Engineering Services. Alderman Budmatz, I know you pulled this, but is there a motion for this resolution to be adopted? Thank you, Alderman Sonoika. Is there a second? Thank you, Alderman Budmatz for the second. With that, the floor is yours since you pulled it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I, it might be moot because we've already approved it under J, but um, I noticed in looking at I, it appears is that we are approving the whole cost of this and then looking for our friends in Arlington Heights to reimburse us for their half of the costs. And um, how can I say this politely? Arlington Heights does not always been the best intergovernmental friend in when it comes to when it comes to following through on agreements. And so I'd like to make sure that our attorney, um, whatever they can do to make sure that um, this, this agreement is separate from each and every other agreement that we've had with Arlington Heights and that we can and that we can put some kind of teeth into the agreement that makes sure that Arlington Heights is gonna is gonna abide by the agreement in, in case they they utilize this to uh, as a lever in other agreements that haven't gone the way they expect. Is that something that we can that their attorney can speak to? Um, thank you. Uh, I, you know, from a, a contract standpoint, um, all agreements are separate. So what's required under this agreement is separate and apart from 
any other agreement or any other issue that's outstanding between the village of Arlington Heights and the city of Rolling Meadows with respect to um, amending the agreement to put teeth in, in the agreement if you have a, a proposed amendment, but you, you may suggest that. However, I don't know, um, I wasn't a party to the negotiation of this agreement and I don't know how that will move forward uh, between the parties that are between, you know, between the village of Arlington Heights and those on their side of it. Okay, well, I guess I'm just looking to, I'm just looking to not get us as a city further down the road with um, with Arlington Heights if we can't resolve our prior problems and then to just to, uh, create another one, if you will. Uh, Manager Crumstock, thank you for raising your hand. Go ahead and take the floor. I was just gonna ask you a couple of questions, but proceed. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Alderman Budnats, this obviously, when we've had this standard IGAs and that's just what it is, they do pay on a timely manner. We've not had a issue with, especially with grant money, um, specifically because if they were ever to default or something else, then they would potentially lose other grants that are out there. And um, that's why these standard IGAs, they've always paid on time. We are taking the lead on this one. We can always look at uh, potentially down the line if we have another issue or item that we're going to be teaming up with them to try to get a grant or something. Maybe we have them as the lead and then we're reimbursing them instead of us always putting out the money. But staff feels comfortable with this IGA, with the separation, how we've dealt with it and their past practice of when we do invoice that they do pay in a timely manner. Okay, then based upon your staff recommendation and, and those comments, I'll, I'll be happy to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Manager Comstock. Thank you, Alderman Budmatz. It's, that's good information to have. Um, any other comments or questions? Manager Comstock, just gonna lower your hand. Any other discussion on this item? Okay. Seeing no further discussion, the question is, shall the resolution be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Fiestas. Yes. Sonica. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Bud Metz. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Assessi. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, the resolution is adopted. Oh. Well, Scroll down on this page. Moving on to other business and reports. I do not have any appointments for this meeting, but I have some coming up now that the committees and commissions discussions have finished. I also don't have any proclamations this week. Does the city clerk have anything to report? I do not. All right, thank you. Then that'll bring us on to the staff reports. And just a reminder, there are no discussions during the staff reports, but the first item we have uh, is the community items of interest. And for that, I will defer to Manager Crumstock when you're ready. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Obviously before you, I don't have to raise my hand and that's what takes a little time walking from the computer to the uh, telephone in between us. But you have three that are in front of you, but I have two additionals to add. Um, the first one that we do wanna again, reiterate and thank everyone who's donated and helped out those residents recently displaced by the Coach Lake condominium fire and happened during the early morning hours of December 29th. As I had a discussion with an alderman, we will bring you back something in probably that March, April, just talk about um, what happened and some of the other items that staff dealt with and how we deal with um, pretty much a larger event, but each event is has its own emergency management class, how we deal with things. Obviously, the second one that we do want to reiterate, and still until February 12th, the City Swank and Elgin Recycling are conducting a light holiday light recycling program again. Uh, collection box is located here at City Hall. It does have some snow in it, but that's particular to the weather that just came up. But items that are accepted include uh, mini lights, um, Italian lights, C7 lights, C9 lights, and again, we cannot take garland or live greens, wreath or anything that's really non-recyclable 
And again, this program runs through February 12th. So you have a little more time if you undig after all the snow that we've had, you might find some lights that you need to recycle. Then we do want to mention, as mentioned, at the January 12th City Council meeting, at this time due to COVID-19 continuing in the area, the February and March City events, namely the Taste of the Town, that was scheduled for February 27th and the St. Patrick's Day dinner that was scheduled for March 13th are being canceled. The new item that I do want to mention is that the next scheduled blood drive will be on Thursday, February 25th, here at City Hall from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m in the council chambers. Another one that I do want to remind in more towards the uh, council members, please remember to return your harassment forms that are mandated and obviously that we need back here on documentation for overall items here um, for the state if we are audited. But those, those are the January 26, 2021 items and I hope everybody did okay shoveling, which I'll be doing in a little bit. So thank you, Mayor and City Council. Uh, thank you, Manager Crumstock. Yep, we were talking about shoveling before the meeting started and those with snowblowers. Uh, moving on then for the second item, fiscal year 2020 November financials. For this, let's go ahead and speak with Finance Director Gallagher when you're ready. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Good evening. And before you in the packet is the fiscal year 2020 financial report for results of operations as of November 30th, 2020, which represents pretty much all of the year, but 92% of the year. While it is intended to be a, a report that shows results of operations, as a reminder, it is not a financial estimate. There's a lot of information in the report. The memo has a lot of detailed information. I'm just gonna high level, give you a high level overview. There's a lot of charts and graphs, and as always, uh, we provide this information to you uh, to do a little bit of your own reading, but a lot of it uh, does help you summarize the results of operations. On page two of the report, starting with the general fund, what I wanted to show you is uh, how it kind of flows from the original adopted budget to where we're, we're standing as of November 30th. Uh, our original adopted budget for the general fund, which is our largest operating fund for the city, showed a deficit position of about 1.3 million for fiscal year 2020, which means that our expenditures uh, were larger than our revenues. When we started the year, we didn't have any uh, issues with, at, at that time because COVID didn't really um, come to fruition until about March. But we did plan uh, a deficit position for 2020. As we got into the year, we, we took some early mitigation, City Council, and we were able to bring in funds, and it's detailed within the memo, from other funds for the health, from the health insurance fund and the liability insurance fund to help with some of the, the early estimates for revenue losses. What that did was provide budget amendments of about $1.8 million, mostly with those transfers for revenues, we had a couple of expenditure budget amendments, and that brings us to our amended adopted budget for the year. With our amended adopted budget, it means that that shows you where we sat uh, per our amended adopted budget, which was a, a, a surplus position, about 400,000. For November 30th, for the general fund, we're showing a little bit better than our adopted budget, our amended budget of about 800,000 with revenues exceeding expenditures. So we're a little bit better than we were initially, uh, but it's important to remember that we still have revenues coming in, such as our major revenues, such as sales tax, telecommunications tax, uh, local use tax, income tax, that we have to earn in the months of January, February, and March, and we record back to 2020. So we still have some revenues that are major revenues that might affect the, the revenue outlook. However, right now, as of November 30th, we're about right on target for our revenues, and we're trending just a little bit below on the expenditures, and that's pretty much where we'll sit, we're about 2% lower on expenditures. Again, we have our city auditors that will be coming in soon. Um, there's a lot of work that's done for the 2020 year, uh, but at this point, these are very fine-tuned estimates that are also trending right in line with our estimates as shown in our 2021 
adopted budget. And it's also in this memo on page nine. So you can see where we are sitting with all the funds and our, our estimates right now are trending very close to what we initially put in our 2021 adopted budget for end year end 2020. What I wanted to also highlight is recall that legal marijuana taxes began in July 2020. That was not a budgeted item for 2020. Uh, due to a, an Illinois Department of Revenue rule for tw in 2021, municipalities may not identify cannabis taxes and so they cannot detail those out in line items. What we had to do is uh, make sure that they are combined per their direction at Department of Revenue, uh, combine those legal cannabis taxes within sales taxes. Uh, the city has now updated all of the information so that it does comply with this regulation and merged cannabis taxes line items uh, within sales taxes. But right now, what we can tell you is that our current estimates are trending with original estimates. I also wanted to highlight that what we're seeing in the economy, too, and we're seeing real estate transfers coming in, and that means that real estate is moving. Uh, we're also seeing that we do have lower receipts coming in for food and beverage taxes in the general fund. However, we're seeing increases slightly in some other areas, such as uh, some areas in sales taxes. Uh, local use tax also, I've mentioned this before, has slightly, more than slightly increased um, beyond the target for the year, and that's due to online sales. The revenue outlook, again, right on target with where we sit for the year. Beginning on page three, uh, just to mention again our budget amendments, uh, we'll highlight those uh, every single time in our memo. It's very important because it also flows to our audit when we present that to you uh, when it's finally done in the year. Uh, but again, highlighting the budget amendments uh, are on page uh, three of the, the memo. We have our liability insurance transfer, health insurance transfers so are about 1.5 coming in for the general fund. We have the census grant for 25,000 and the CARES Act grant of 316,000. So those were the budget amendments approved by the city council. Our expenditure budget amendments are also listed. We have a business assistance program for 2020. The Temporary Family Assistance Program of 5,000, each of those are 5,000, and the grant to the Salvation Army of 25,000. Just good to highlight those again to show you those budget amendments approved by City Council. I did want to touch on the COVID relief programs. Again, I, I mentioned the CARES Act program of 316,000. As a reminder, we applied for about 900,000 uh, from CARES Act, which is a Cook County funds uh, distributed from the federal government. And we received 316,000. Cook County, uh, just as a footnote to that, uh, did award an additional 12,000. Ironically, Cook County reached out to us today and let us know the check is coming pretty soon. So that will be booked. <laughs> it's, it's literally in the mail. Um, so that is good news. We will keep on top of that in case there are additional funds out there for the CARES Act. We have submitted to the FEMA, uh, well, to FEMA, uh, the Federal Emergency Management Association for funds as well. Uh, so those are the types of things that we'll continue to work on. Uh, there have been new in increases in requirements and things like that, and we'll continue to report back to you on that. Again, just to summarize for the general fund, we're, we're on target with our initial estimates of about $10 million of fund balance for the year, and that represents about three months of reserves on hand. Right in the midpoint, about 24%, to 27% based on current estimates estimates on our fund balance pop, pop parameters. Really, this really highlights most of the general fund just because it's the largest operating fund. I'll just touch on slightly within the memo itself as well. Real quickly, utilities fund and the refuse fund, uh, slightly lower for revenues on the, the utilities fund. Um, and I did want to mention too that expenditures are lower, but that was uh, obviously a planned move by the city as we're we were dealing with COVID just to ensure that, that revenues, um, to balance out any revenue losses, uh, which right now we're just slightly down at 7%. Refuse fund is really on target, nothing really to report there. We did add some economic data. Again, this has been in the report before, but just keeping you apprised of the current un unemployment rate as of November. And then the cash and investment summary is also in this report. As of November 30th, the city's cash position is 
across all funds. Again, there's a lot of detail within the memo, within the, the body of the uh, financials, and uh, I'll leave it there for tonight. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you for the report, Finance Director Gallagher. I appreciate the highlights and the information that you shared with us. Uh, for this next one, I'll defer to Director Horn on the LEAF program discussion. Director Horn. Thank you, Mayor. I couldn't get my microphone. Um, not a lot to report. Uh, the memo is pretty clear. Uh, we'll be providing uh, information regarding the requested information on the LEAF uh, potential for a LEAF program in March. That's it. Thank you. Very well. Thank you. Um, then we'll go back to Manager Crumstock and we'll talk about the December 2020 new businesses that, that came in the month of December. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Obviously, there's only one that we have for new business. Uh, we want to thank all the new businesses that moved in during 2020 during a pandemic and continue thriving. We also want to thank the Council for all uh, that they did to make sure that six Bs were approved and additional work continues. And that will finish it for 2020. But again, we're already seeing some new ones in 2021. So with that, that uh, is the December new business list of one. Uh, thanks for bringing us up to speed on that one. Uh, this will now bring us to matters not on the agenda. Are there any matters not on the agenda? Just waiting to see if there's any hands. Alderman Bassesi. Yes, I just wanted to uh, put a last, uh, um, how do I say this, uh, communication oh. out there regarding the Chipper Program Survey. Uh, I believe we're going to stop uh, tallying on the first, if that's correct, Mr. Horn. Yes, I see him nodding his head. Uh, and we'll be discussing results at our next COW meeting. So uh, if you do want to uh, participate in that and you haven't, uh, please do so. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bassesi. Any other matters not on the agenda? All right. Well, then you will notice on this agenda that uh, there is a request to go into closed session and it will require, it does require a motion and a roll call vote. <clears throat> so with that, do I have by show of hand a motion to go into closed session? Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Alderman Diastas for the second. Um, this is for personnel, of course. Is there any discussion about going into closed session for personnel? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll then? Micah. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Bud Max. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Assessi. Yes. Diestas. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, we will now enter into closed session. So with this, the audience and press, you are advised that we do not anticipate taking any action upon returning to open session. So with that, I wish you all a wonderful evening. Enjoy the snow. Uh, Council will see you on the other line for closed session shortly. <laughs>